Morningstar actually got the ball in a little too deep. But to show you the great athletic ability of number 22, watch this. You can see there is the throw. And he's got to reach back for it. And somehow, Bob, he was able to extend score and draw the foul. Pretty good concentration on where the ball was. Really good concentration. He has 11 points. He's hit both of his free throws. Mom is with us here today watching the twins, and now he's two of three for the line. Hamilton wanted it on the left wing. Now he's got it. Morningstar is on it. Markeith gambles. Jacobin, the three ball, no. It just, that was not a good shot. He wasn't set to shoot. He wasn't on balance. Minute, keep it, trying to keep Marcus out. They get a little help down there, though. Brown was down to help. And Reed chases down the miss, battles, and one. Rick Barnes is upset. He thinks that the shooter initiated the contact on this play. And then Brown pushing back now. Those were two of the players that were involved in that trash talking. Marquise said, wait, what's that? <laughs> I'm sure that Marquise was just an angel out there on the floor, too, aren't you, folks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am sure there was no provocation for that, right? Just out of the blue, and there's Angel. And, and one of his sons wasn't last night in the hallway, Angel, but they're a delight to be around, both of them, right? That, that was a really big three-point play by Reed. He hustled with the shot, made a good fake, missed it, came back in, got the rebound, and got a three-point play out of it. That's been the most impressive play of the game so far, Reed just making on offense. Hamilton, short. Wasn't real open. Defensive man got a piece of that one coming from the side. Morningstar under deep pressure nails tough three ball. Now this is different Morningstar than we saw play last night uh, in the game against A uh, and M. I'm sorry, Colorado. I've had so many games I can't remember. Uh, I think I put that negative thought in your head. I had the same impression. Here comes Johnson stepping out off the front of the iron. Lead pass, Markeith. And ball is out of bounds, but it belongs to Kansas. Well, we've got 5-10 remaining here in the first half. The Jayhawks really have dominated this game from the very beginning. Bob, give some of the late joining fans a little bit of an overview here. Well, I think Kansas got off to a really good start, and as we've talked before, Brent, uh, Markeith and Marcus are just too difficult for anybody to handle uh, without a lot of help, including a team as good as Texas. Uh, they've had really good movement on offense. They've beaten Texas down the floor to some good baskets in the break. And Texas has not shot the ball very well. So almost every phase of the game uh, has been better for Kansas than it has been for Texas. Shelby back on the floor, loses control. There's going to be a foul called. No, traveling. Yes, he turned it over. That's what I thought they should call. Going to get a good look at Morris here. Coming back to the outside on a little spin move because there was no help. Here again, nobody gets in to help. If you don't get back in and help on those guys inside, either one of them, like here, watch. No help, turnaround shot. You get help, he doesn't have the room to make that. They have played together all their life, and they would like the same NBA team to draft both of them. I talked to them about that, and they said, we're not looking forward to being separated. We just hope we go to the same NBA team someday. And a great block by Marcus. Watch Taylor with the speed. This is what he brings to the Jayhawks. You can't coach speed. All right, here's a drive and a really, really good 
block from behind. And now a good look down the floor. The outlet pass and Taylor beats him to the bucket. You know, we talked a little bit, Brent, about the difference in the times that these two teams played yesterday. The time situation favoring Kansas over Texas. I think Texas is tired. I think they're tired running the floor in either direction. Well, championship week continues, Coach, tomorrow afternoon with the ACC and the SEC. First at 1 Eastern on ABC. It'll be Kentucky and Florida in the SEC championship. At 1 Eastern on ESPN, North Carolina and Duke will do it one more time for the ACC championship. Wow, what a weekend this has been. Uh, so Brown will bring it across, 39-23, the largest Kansas lead of the game, up by 16. Great pass to Johnson, and he could not flush it. And then he runs into Robinson. Commits the foul. Got a technical somewhere. I'm not sure just where this technical was called. Robinson, we are being told from the table, picked up the technical. Maybe something he said. Self is very upset with him. It very well could have been something he said after the collision. We'll sort this all out, and we'll tell you the story when you come back. All right, Dari, thank you very much. So let's sort this out. There was a personal foul called on Gary Johnson here. Cleared it out. And then the technical is called on Robinson for a little bit of trash talking for what he yelled at Johnson. So Jacobin Brown is on the free throw line, and he misses the first. Knocks down the second one. Now the result of this, because it was the fifth team foul, remember, is that the Jayhawks will have the ball out of bounds after the foul on the play. And Robinson takes a seat. Holly, uh, what's going on over there in the Texas huddle during these timeouts? Well, Brent, it's really changed in the last couple of minutes. I would have said two huddles ago, Texas was pretty confident and calm. In fact, somebody said to me, we've been here before because they trailed big against Kansas in Lawrence in that first meeting and came back strong in the second half. But in this last huddle, it was frustration. Rick Barnes said to his guys, I can't believe you're not responding. He's asking for more energy, more toughness. He's wondering why they're not answering back. I'm going to go to your point. You can't have more energy if you're a little bit tired. And the one thing we know about Texas A&M, they had a physical bunch. They can they can take a toll on a team that plays late in the evening. That that four to five hours difference between the two games last year, including warm up, playing time, eating, and everything. I can't begin to tell you how important that is, uh, and how much in favor of Kansas and their energy is over Texas and their energy in this game. And Bob, that was a perfect example. Taylor just blew past and got all the way to the rim, and nobody stepped over to take him. Hamilton now is able to come back down from the baseline to score. He has 10 points here for the Horns. Well, you know, Kansas has basically beaten Texas uh, for 18, 17 minutes from one end of the floor to the other, regardless of which direction they're going. And that, to me, is what makes Markeith and Marcus lethal at the next level. Well, no one even came out and played in there. I mean, you can't leave either one of them alone out there. And it's a blocking foul. Is that on Marcus down on the baseline? Yes, it is. And that's his second. Well, I'm going to remind you that in Lawrence, all right, Texas did fall behind in the first half and then came out, remember, with that 50 point explosion that we showed you at the top of this broadcast. They rallied in the in the second half of that game. Now, let's let's go to Holly Rowe because Holly, that wasn't a very emotional day for Kansas. They've never used it as an excuse 
but you and I know that they could have. That's right. The night before that game, Thomas Robinson got a shocking phone call from his little sister to tell him that their mom had passed away unexpectedly, Lisa Robinson. They said that they went with him to his room in the dorm, and then they were with him all night. They said they were probably up till 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, everybody just sitting around sobbing. They were expended emotionally, and although they came out with strong energy to start that game, rallying behind Thomas, they got tired in the second half, guys, and got worn out because they hadn't slept all night. Yeah, very good point. Well, that was a classical example of not using the shot fake. I mean, if Reed just nods his head, he's shooting a wide open 18 foot shot. And that shot, he had so much pressure on him, he couldn't see the bucket. Johnson loses it as he tried to muscle into the basket, tried to force it a little bit. Oh, tailored a little and good defense down low, little unable to finish. I am very impressed with the speed that Taylor has brought to this game today for Kansas because remember he was suspended for a couple of games for the and then he yielded his starting spot to Elijah Johnson but he's the best point guard on this team. I think he's demonstrating that here today. Coach. You know not just the speed but he sees well like he really saw little open right there. And we've got a timeout. 